Okay, now I'm on the right. Seeing beyond, living transformed is a spiritual crossing of the threshold to the world of being a truly expanded human being. Join medium Cheryl and Kelly for conversations about discovering deep spirituality, developing your intuitive and empathic skills, and personal mediumship. Each episode will focus on tips, tools, and techniques to help you understand and expand your own inner gifts and life journey. You can call in each week to receive spiritual guidance, personal readings, and we'll answer your questions. We'll talk with luminary experts on meditations, the afterlife, energy healing, past lives, and much more. Join our Seeing Beyond spiritual community to learn more about expanding your mind, body, and soul, and have fun on your journey to empower transformation. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our show this evening. Uh, tonight's show, it's a really special show because we have Kelly back tonight. Yay, so happy to be back, too. Kelly, it's we can't wait to hear about your travels and your adventures. Uh, but let's yes. first welcome everyone logging on. We have a great show tonight. We're going to be talking about beyond the surface, peering into energy echoes. So this is a very mystic evening. So I hope everyone's ready for tonight. Uh, but first, Kelly, just share with us. How are you? Are you okay? How's the jet lag? Are you back? Are you feeling? I'm back. You know, I mean, it's it's interesting that you know jet lag came, and then a week later we had the time change, and so like the first week I was getting up at like three or four in the morning every day and falling asleep at like eight or nine. So um, now I'm kind of back on my regular schedule, waking up at like seven thirty. So that's good, and going to bed at like midnight. So I'm kind of finally. It took me a while. The jet yeah. lag was really, really bad coming home. Um, you know, and, and Egypt was so amazing. Mm -hmm. But let me just say that my skin didn't like the weather. Oh. <laughs> I got um, really chopped lips. I was drinking lots of those hydrated waters. My skin just broke out everywhere. I mean, it was just like very, very beautiful, but a lot of pollution. And yeah. I don't think my skin was, you know, um, was ready for that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we Goodness. have pollution in the U.S., but not like it was there. It's totally different, and my lungs were difficult. But I loved Egypt. I mean, it was the most amazing things to see, the energy to feel, and the thought that it's like so old, you know, and we're touching something, you know, that's been around for like since before Christ, right? Like that's amazing, mm -hmm. and it's so pristine. And what's so fascinating is that they had such advanced, you know, um, skills back then to build something that would withstand all this time, earthquakes, mm. you know, floods, even like, how do they have that knowledge? It's just so fascinating. That's all I could say. It's like, never seen anything like it. That's wonderful. And so just to share with people, we're going to be talking about Kelly's journey this evening. So if you are looking to go to Egypt or if you've been to Egypt, uh, please, I believe, Kelly, you're going to share some photos with us that you took. Well, and just I have one photo. I don't know how to share it on here. Okay. Um, I put it on my social media, though, on Instagram and TikTok. It's on TikTok. Um, you can see it because on Instagram, it was my stories. But with the first day we were there, Jules and I just thought, let's jump right into it. We hired a guide and we went out and explored and we saw these uh, the Red Pyramid. And mm -hmm. we climbed, of course, we're totally unprepared. I'm wearing a dress. We got backpacks on and we get up to the top. You have to climb upstairs to get into the pyramid. And I'm like, wow, that was a workout thinking that was tough. And then you get inside the pyramid and you're literally walking hunched over, almost like crawling down like this ladder down which seems like forever and the dress is like getting caught on my shoes and my backpack's getting stuck on the it was a small area i'm claustrophobic i have mm. severe anxiety but i i handled it but i just kept saying to jules he was in front of me are you at the bottom yet are you at the bottom yet <laughs> you know then once you get to the bottom you can stand up for a second but then you got to duck down and go through this hallway and then you can stand up again and then you got to walk upstairs that they built inside to get up to this other portion. And I thought when I finally got there, I'm going to take pictures. Yeah. And so I'm trying to take a picture of the roof because it's like stepped pyramid going up and it just looks mm -hmm. so cool. Mm -hmm. And my camera just snapped like 
a whole bunch of shots and I only took one photo. Oh. And like, and it took like five. And on two of them, there was a clear, very vivid face which looked very similar to some of the um, uh, statues and things like that you see of the mm-hmm. gods or like the, the um, you know, like raw, raw, like, I cannot think of the name, but anyway, some of the like gods and some of the, the yeah. kings and stuff. Yes, yes. Very similar. And I thought, how interesting. And then I felt very funny in there. I just felt really overwhelmed and like we weren't wanted inside there. Not that it was evil, almost just mm-hmm. like it was sacred and it didn't want us in this pyramid. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, because they are burial places. Yeah. So I then tried to take a selfie and everything around my face was all like fuzzy, but the rest of it's focused, which was so weird. Um, but it was kind of how I felt. I felt very like vibrating, like a lot yeah, of that. That is me. strange. That is strange. Yeah. Yeah, so then we got out of there because we're like, we just need to get out of here. And, of course, you know, that was like the next pyramid we went after that. I was like, is it the same? They're like, pretty much, but it's even harder. And I'm like, no, we're good. <laughs> so that was like the first day. So um, after, oh, thank you, Brianna. She posted it. After that, then we did like a lot of the museums and then the temples. And then at the very end of our trip with the group, because this was before the group, the very end we went and saw you know, the, the Giza pyramids and all of that. And that was a lot of fun. And I really liked the energy around them and inside them and around a lot of the temples, like the mm. Philae temple was like mm-hmm. on a little island. And I just really mm. felt good on that island. Mm-hmm. So there was some great energy in some of them. And some of them, you felt like you were imposing, um, like almost like you were invading their space. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't welcoming, not that they were mean, just mm-hmm. sort of like this was their sacred space and how dare we yeah. walk on it kind of feeling. Yeah. Right. But not all felt that way. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. I know you've been to Egypt before, Cheryl, when you went to go to all these places. Yes, I've been to Egypt. And uh, I mean, there are some amazing, I mean, every place is amazing, as you said, not only the pyramids and the Sphinx, which is amazing, but, uh, you know, yeah. I think it's called Oswan. I think you take yeah, the Nile. Yeah, that was so beautiful. That was beautiful. And oh, I the, love that. That was tremendous. And I remember seeing the Isis temple. And uh, But everything that you mentioned, I feel like I had some familiarity with it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, hi, Kelly. She, oh, she was on the trip. Yes. Hi, Daylene. It was an amazing trip. It really was. Oh, you know, it, I, I might do this again, maybe with Cher, um, with Jules, maybe not. Maybe mm-hmm. Jules does hers on her and I do mine on I, my own because, yeah. you know, w- it was an amazing trip, but I learned a lot. Yeah. And yeah. it was great. So we'll see. We'll see. That's that's wonderful. And um, so uh, we'll, for every, anyone want to a- ask Kelly any questions about her trip, feel free to, you know, let, let us know by writing in the comments section. Or you can email us. You can send your questions or any questions that you may have for tonight's show or any show. Uh, go ahead and send them to questions at seeingbeyondradio.com. And if you'd like to join our uh email list for our radio show that website is seeingbeyondradio.com uh, uh, but kelly I I, did ask yeah. a question oh, said, good. what is under the left paw of the sphinx i'll tell you what mm-hmm. i don't know i didn't see anything personally and nobody mm-hmm. said anything to us so mm-hmm. please um if you know let me know and mm-hmm. i can look back at my pictures that's from eddie bryant mm-hmm. yeah i i haven't heard anything did you hear anything about that no, I, I haven't. It's been so long for me. I don't remember the left paw of the Sphinx. Yeah. I, I, nobody said anything to us. So if there is a story behind that, I'd love to know. Please so share with us. Heidi yeah. is asking if we can put this down. Heidi's saying, how was the energy and the spirits in Egypt? You know, it was very interesting. So Jules and I went to this new museum that's opening up. I forget oh. what it was called. But we did a little tour and we got to go walk through and see like 30 mummies. I don't know, maybe 20 or whatever it was. And they were all like the Ramses and like the, mm-hmm. and other people. Like it tells you like this dynasty, that dynasty. And some of them did not feel good, their energy. The, mm-hmm. them. 
They just felt like they weren't nice people. And this is before we learned any history. And then mm -hmm. some of them felt very loving and good. Mm -hmm. And when our um, Egyptologist started telling us about everything, we were going to all the temples, it, it was pretty right on what we felt. It was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. There was like one that we didn't feel good and he was kind of like more of a tyrant and people didn't like him. And, you know, and then the ones that we felt really loving and sweet and felt a lot of like good energy, he was a good king and people loved him and, you know, worshiped him really like happily. And so that was very interesting. Like I said, some of the temples were very, um, felt very good and some of them didn't feel so great. And part of the issue I think is like, like the, I think it's the Philae temple. They had to move it from underwater back to a new mm -hmm. island mm -hmm. and they moved it like stone by stone and tried mm -hmm. to keep it exactly as it was. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, you know, that one still felt really good, but mm -hmm. definitely the energy had been disturbed. You could feel that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did feel pretty good in most of them. There was just a couple that made me feel nauseous. As a matter of fact, I don't know if it was um, one of the Giza pyramids, but I think it was the step pyramid. We mm -hmm. were walking around, not the pyramid, but like there's like a little like, um, I don't know what you call them, like little cubbies of things you could go in that they did things in, right? Like buildings kind of, but they're old. And I got pretty sick in one of them. Mm -hmm. And I had to like leave and it was really interesting. Um, I felt like I was having a heart attack. And one of the ladies on there with us was a nurse and, you know, she was checking my vitals and I was okay, but they, I, I sat down in there trying to feel better and it was getting worse. So once mm -hmm. I got outside, I felt better. Oh, good. It was very weird, but Thanks. other people felt a little wonky in there as well. So I do think that, you know, you have to follow your own like, you know, body and my body did not like that portion. It wasn't necessarily a temple. I don't know exactly what it was but, or what they did in there, but there was some, a lot of hylogryphs and stories in there and it was really fascinating. It was very cool because it was a hot day and it was nice and cool inside. Oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely. So of course, you know, we were spending a lot of time in there and I got really sick. Yeah. Well, Heidi, thank you for your question. And Kelly, I'm so glad that you felt better and Listen to your yeah. intuition and stepped out. Uh, my question, Kelly, I have for you is uh, because I'm very drawn to Egypt. Like I know I've had past okay. lives there. I've right? always just felt, I've always felt, I don't know, a home away from home in some way, you know, in some, in some, uh, in some time That's period, beautiful. in some ancient time period, I feel that very much. And I'm wondering if you feel that, do you feel that you're, you, you know, I was curious about that. And, and, Honestly, I know Jules felt very drawn to it like that as well. I didn't feel that so much there as I did when I was in India. Oh, India. I felt very drawn to India. Yes. But there, I just was more curious mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. of what I would feel and what I would see and what, what I was drawn to. And I was very drawn to... Um, a lot of the the temples, but I'm I'm really drawn to the pyramids, mm -hmm. and for different reasons probably than most of the group because a lot of the people on this trip were were healers, and Jules is a healer, and I I love I mean I'm going to learn the healing modality. I feel like I'm a natural born healer, but that's not where I'm at right now. I actually felt a strong connection, and 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 I know this sounds like so corny, but what is it? I mean I talk to dead people, so anything is corny, right? Um, I felt connection to the aliens. Yeah, I really did. Yeah, I felt yeah. definite, yeah. like mm -hmm. there had been definite to me. There mm -hmm. was proof that there was like um, somebody was helping them back then. There was no mm -hmm. way. And some of the the things. Oh yes. Them. There's clear like there's some otherworldly reason that they they face them a certain way and the mm -hmm. light oh, yes. a certain way and, and if you stand yes. in certain spots where the sun's coming in it's like the amazing energy that you feel it's it's undeniable like there's no way that they would have had that knowledge back then there's just no way and yes. and it was advanced techniques that they used like how did they very of tail the things very. and there's actual rebar that they use, like the metal that we use now mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. hold stones together. They actually used that back then. Mm -hmm. Where did they get it? How did they mm -hmm. know? Like, there's just no way nobody else was building like that. And the mathematical it's, equations, when you put mm -hmm. these together, they're mm -hmm. 
just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, yes. And speaking of aliens, I mean, talking about, you know, uh, radio towers, so to speak, or communication centers, or uh, absolutely, I, I feel strongly that, yes, definitely there is um, other favorable energies and beings uh, helping with the great pyramids of Egypt and, 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 and the whole country as well. So here's uh, a question. Yes, thanks for picking that one. I was looking at that one. Yeah. So is there a tunnel under the Sphinx pause? So actually we did mm. see there was a room mm -hmm. down there. We saw mm -hmm. underneath. We didn't go in it. We weren't allowed to. But we mm -hmm. did get up and close to the pause. And that what they explained is that they did find a tunnel that goes from the Sphinx to one of the pyramids. And mm -hmm. they believe it goes to other places. Mm -hmm. But it has collapsed over the years. So they don't know the whole story. They only have theories. And it was fascinating. So yes, thank you. If that's what the person was asking about earlier, that we did learn about that. Thank you. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard that. I've heard there's uh, several tunnels everywhere connecting the pyramids together to other mm -hmm. places. And we um, went down underground into one of these some mm -hmm. of these tunnels that were um, more like hallways, and then to the mm -hmm. right and the left were like big tombs which was wow. really interesting. Um, we walked around that like a block long in that. When it goes further, it actually goes all the way to the pyramids, which is like a mile away. But um, but it, it I, I didn't personally like the energy in there. It felt, because yeah. it's where, well, it's there's a lot of graves mm -hmm. or empty caskets. So I don't know mm -hmm. what happened. Well, but we know that like the, um, I think it is, is it, um, the Greeks mm -hmm. uh, that came in and invaded and tried to mm -hmm. engrave over all of their things and put crosses. Yes. Up. So it felt like a lot of um, sadness in there to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. necessarily like the feeling in there and I didn't like the way it felt inside there just, but it mm -hmm. was fascinating to see this huge like grave or tombstone or whatever you want to call it, this thing that was like bigger than life. And, it was so perfectly cut. It had like mm -hmm. a perfect right angle. How mm -hmm. did they cut the stone like that? I know. How? Well, um, also, I think you went to the Valley of the Kings. I think you went there. We did. The Valley of the so Kings. Many grave sites there in the hills mm -hmm. to I see mean, the tombs. New stuff every day, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have been ra uh, raided. That's why we don't know a lot about the yes. Egyptian uh, royalty or the kings is because a lot of the tombs were raided. And that's why King Tut is so uh, famous or well known because somehow was his well tomb reserved. was not raided and they were able to find the history. Yeah, and I went all to of see the, all of that. It's very beautiful. Yes. Stuff. And put it in the, they put most of it in the Cairo museum. And fortunately they have those uh, museum exhibits around the world. So, uh, you know, in these bigger cities, they have the, I encourage anyone to go to a, a museum in their area if there's a Cairo exhibit or an Egyptian exhibit, yes. uh, because Definitely. lovely, amazing information. So yeah. somebody said, who was buried in the pyramids? Famous kings and their families. Yes. So basically, when somebody is like, when they get married, they start building like their tombs. Um, when they have children, they start building them as well. It's my understanding. Um, the same thing with they still do to this day in some of the little villages. A family will start out with a one-story house, and then they have a child, and they build a second story, and they have another child, they build a third story, and they just continue building. And they don't care what the outside looks like because all that matters is what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I love that. So the buildings weren't pretty, but inside they make them beautiful with lots of mm -hmm. colors. And back in the day, they did that too. They build for the future. So, and they're always planning their death, I guess, in a way, but, um, which is a little morbid feeling, but they wanted the most beautiful. And I don't know if I have the name right, but I believe it's like Nefertiti's. Yeah. Like Nef her husband loved Nef her a lot, even though he had a lot of wives mm -hmm. and he did a, a beautiful temple for her and everything too. Yeah. And, um, there was some beautiful stories I really loved. We had the best, best Egyptologist guide. Oh, uh, not to mention, I hope he hears this. He was pretty hot. And so all the girls were just so happy that we had a hot guide. <laughs> That's great. That makes it more fun. He was so down to earth and he gave it a spiritual side. 
oh, you know, that's for right. us. He put the mm-hmm. spiritual spin on it for us, mm-hmm. which they don't normally do. So that mm-hmm. was really, um, that was helpful. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. somebody else said right here, do you feel the pyramids amplify your psychic senses? Yes. I'm going to be honest here. I'm out of shape. And it took a lot to get up the the stairs and then up the the narrow pathways. Um, Yes, I do feel that I had a lot of visions. We went in early one morning. We had to get up at three in the morning to get private time in the king's chamber in the the pyramid. And um, we had it from like three to five in the morning in the queen, the king in the queen's chamber. And we did a beautiful meditation in there that the jewels led. And I saw a lot of visions. And had a lot of like um, interesting feelings. I really liked mm-hmm. it. But mm-hmm. when it came time to go into the Queen's yeah. one, the little um, hallway to get into that one was smaller than the King's. And my back was already out. And mm-hmm. me and two other ladies were like, we can't mm-hmm. do this. And they had mm-hmm. construction going on. And mm-hmm. there was like wood that you had to climb over. And there was saws in there. And I'm like, it's, I'm already out of like it, an injured person. I don't need to injure myself more. So I didn't get in the queen's chamber, but Jules did and took everybody in there and they did chanting. I, nice. I believe she said, and she said it was amazing energy in there. She loved it. Okay. So I did okay. feel a lot, but once I caught my breath, we were in our meditation. So I couldn't do anything until after the meditation and we had to leave. Yeah. So, yeah. I had planned on doing past life readings in there, but we mm-hmm. really didn't have the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, a great question too, lot. Heidi. Thanks yeah. for your interest, Heidi. And thanks for everyone asking all these great questions. Uh, really keep them coming in. Uh, you can type them in the comments section. And for everyone on Instagram Live, we see you. If you want to ask some questions too, we'll be happy to post them as well. Do you see another one? Um, just this, I just thought this person said that the pyramids, that it was amazing too, but the pyramids messed up her pictures. So I, I got nice orbs in there for sure. I really liked it. Yeah, I was happy. Oh, um, do most people have a past life tied to Egypt? Well, that's a great question. I don't think so, but it's possible. I only saw one person that I read for, because we did readings for everybody, and only one person that I read for came up with a past life in Egypt, and it felt like a very profound past life, and they could mm-hmm. resonate with it all. So um, I do think we have past lives, you know, tied to many different continents of the world. And possibly maybe we all have been on Egypt at one point. But for some reason, those weren't popping up for me um, when I was reading people. And to me, that just means that that wasn't the most important past life that person had. There was another life that was more important that needed to be dealt with in this life. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Cheryl? It does. It's you said it beautifully. Okay, I hope that came out right. No, your um, picture froze for a little bit, but you said it beautifully. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. We heard good. you. Yeah. You're and then good. Heidi, do ancient people spirits feel different than modern people spirits? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, they felt the same. With that. The picture I took that I got that spirit. Typically, I I always say I work in the light, and every spirit I've ever felt has felt so loving and so caring and wanting to be here or very polite about not wanting to be here, like we'll be respectful, you know, and and just be like, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, But that particular pyramid, the red pyramid, I did not like the feeling in there, mm-hmm. and I did not like the feeling of that spirit. I felt very unwanted, and mm-hmm. I felt like I needed to get out. So I don't think it was going to hurt me or anything, but I really felt like the intention was like, get out of my pyramid. So um, that was something new for me to feel that from a spirit, to be honest. Yeah. Somebody else felt closed in and had, had, had to back out. Well, it is tight. It is tight crawling in those pyramids. I mean, it's not for people with claustrophobic. Yeah. I mean, if you have claustrophobia, you cannot... You won't want to. I'll just say that. You won't want to. I have claustrophobia. <coughs> and I really wanted to. And I forced myself. If I can prepare my mind in advance, I can do it. But I have to know, like, this is how many feet I have to climb, you know, up. And this is how many, you know, so I can count my way to where I'm at. 
if I don't have that knowledge of like, it's going to end, I have panic attacks. But you did okay. Yeah. I'm going to see um, if I I don't know if anybody shared any experiences. Um, Someone asked this from Instagram, if you don't mind. Uh, Syrians and the dog star. Uh, I don't know did, about that. Egyptians recognize the Syrians. Hmm, yeah, that's, that's a, a good, good question. question. Um, I, next time. I didn't hear anything about that. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, um, good question. Yeah. Such a great this audience. is a good question too, Rosemary. Like I said, most places I felt very um, like they wanted us to know and they wanted us in the spaces. Um, but there was a couple where I felt like we were invading their privacy. They didn't want people in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so you definitely felt the different energy. Yeah, definitely felt that. And, and you know, I think the ones I felt that like it was very sacred. Like they really didn't want people, you know, um, in their burial. That's what I felt. Oh, the Nile River. You know, I really enjoyed being on a Nile cruise too. We did that for three nights and it was, it was nice, especially at nighttime. And we went through like their version of the locks mm -hmm. and that was really fun. And like mm -hmm. this one guy in a rowboat trying to sell us things, throwing yes. him up on like up two stories and then we're throwing it back down to him going, no, we don't want it. It was funny. Yes, um, I remember that. Yeah, I saw your Facebook like that. and the two young boys singing, or the two. Oh, they were so singing sweet. Did to you, you see on the, the boat. Smile on they them. were yes. They were they in smiled. their boats mm -hmm. next to your big boat, and they're looking up yeah. into the camera singing. They were like yeah. on paddle boards. Yeah, and um, the one he just lit up the whole room like his smile. I didn't even see the other one. I was so focused on him until the very end. And I moved over. I was like, oh, there is another voice. Because honestly, they were so beautiful, their voices together. I didn't Aww. realize there was two singers. I was like so focused on that beautiful smile of that little boy. He just made me feel so good. Such a happy kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very sweet. And that was an Oswan on the Nile oh. River. That was the day we went to the Nubian village. We also had lunch on a Feluca and mm -hmm. we took a nap as it sailed around the Nile. Oh, that's and right. It was yes. so beautiful. And then we went in to the um, this Nubian village along the the Nile River and we rode camels to the village. Oh, and good. that was an experience of a lifetime that I think is only needed to be done one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was difficult to get on. Once I got on, standing up was scary because you almost feel like you're going to fall. You have to catch your balance. Then the, the the camel I had, I believe the camel was drunk. Okay. <laughs> and the, all of the other people on their camels had somebody leading the camel. And yeah. Jules and I were the last two. And our we had one guy leading both our camels and Jules won it off. So my guy left my camel and went to go help Jules and the camel was doing its own thing, walking at its own pace. And there's like a, a little bit of a sand dune that goes down to the Nile river and it's walking like on the edge and like it's foot's like slipping oh on the gosh. edge and I'm pulling it to the right. Oh my and the gosh. guy's like going, you know, just put your feet to its side to tell it to go faster. Cause it was like kind of just like hanging out it wasn't moving mm -hmm. so I did that and it took off running so then I was like I took my feet off and then it stopped and I was just like oh my gosh and then finally the guy came back and saved me um I was <sighs> like I'm gonna die <laughs> falling into the Nile River on a camel and then when it was time to get off the camel they literally just plopped down and you fly I fling forward so three oh, people yeah. caught me because they oh, knew this my. camel was gonna do that I didn't I was like oh we're going down and then I got caught in the air by three people. So that oh, was an experience. Catapulted you off of there. It did, basically. And I feel like it was intentional. <laughs> That's funny. Someone yeah. is saying that well, camels are stubborn. And, but, yeah. and that must be hard on your back. Kelly, was it hard yeah. on your back to it ride the camel? It was really hard on my back. I was just more nervous. Like I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I could turn around and look because I felt that I might yeah. fall. It was like okay. balancing on a bicycle. 
Mm. That's how it felt. Even though I know that I had more balance, it still felt like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I I did feel like my camel was laid back and I feel like somebody has been giving him some happy stuff because he was kind of mellow. And to me, my camel reminded me of Bob Marley. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. I have vertigo too, Rosemary. You know, um, and my vertigo was pretty bad in Egypt because my allergies were so bad from the um, mm. the smog. But mm. I was able to do it. I just couldn't turn around and look at anybody behind me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was terrified that I'd lose my balance and fall or get like start spinning. So yeah, you could do it. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you? I was just thinking, where's Jeffrey? And there he is. He shows up. Hi, Jeffrey. You were were manifesting him. We manifested you, Jeffrey. So Jeffrey and I did two shows while you were away, right? And And they were in the middle of the night in Egypt, so I couldn't listen. Yeah. They were like three in the morning, I think. Well, Jeffrey, you were terrific, and we want to have you back on. Yes, uh, with me. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And Lori, of course, maybe Lori's on the call with this. I just missed her logging on, but yeah, thank, you, then, Lori. Uh, thank you, Lori. And then what's her name? Uh, Sabrina. Thank you, Sabrina. Sabrina. She did a show too while I was gone. Yeah, I feel we like did I was great. gone forever. I feel like it's not even my show anymore. It's all Cheryl's yeah. show now. Yay, it was the Cheryl show. <laughs> for, for five weeks, it was all Cheryl. Only temporarily, yeah. but it was fun. And we missed you, Kelly. We're so glad oh. you're back. And we were so excited for you to share, to share your experiences, to talk about the mystical Egypt trip that you had. And I mean, beautiful. this is truly around the world, right? And did you feel safe over there, may I ask? Oh did my you gosh. Feel safe? They were the nicest people. Mm-hmm. I love Egyptian people. Mm-hmm. So welcoming, so polite, so loving, so wanting to teach us everything, you know, like that about their culture. Very, very nice. Um, I, I felt very safe. Our tour company was like amazing. They bent over backwards. I needed a special type of water for my CPAP machine. And mm-hmm. the owner of the company went out and got it for me at the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. of the girls got a little bit of a heat stroke when we were out mm-hmm. one day. It was super hot, but mm-hmm. we didn't know she felt, didn't feel good. And they called an ambulance. They came and okay. treated her at the site okay. and then brought her back to meet us because we were out touring after they took care of her and then Uh she was sick the next day still a little bit and they offered to send a doctor to her room oh my purchase for any of this like they just took care of us and we stayed at the most beautiful resorts and everything was so nice the people were so nice um i I really enjoyed it and loved it and felt very very safe and very welcomed i didn't feel like nobody wanted us there i felt like they loved us there and were happy Oh, that's yeah. just lovely. And I love kashari. It's a dish they make. I don't know. It's oh, like good. rice and noodles, like um, macaroni noodles and other all these other things, garbanzo beans and this and that. And then they put like a tomato sauce on it. And it's so good. The shari. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. Yes. And oh, look up. Background twice. Yay. Yeah. Art, we have, and Brianna, hey, Brianna was with us the whole time. She did great, Kelly. Art, we have a, for everyone listening, we have a great co host backstage, right? We yes. have Brianna, who's She's our part of our show for sure. Part of our show. She makes us, you know, everything run smoothly. She, checks all the comments, checks your questions on email. Really, anytime we need anything, she makes our show smooth uh, and runs just beautifully. So thank you, Brianna, for all of her hard work as well. Somebody asked how the food was in Egypt. Let me just tell you, I really love the food. And I have a lot of um, food issues. I can only eat limited things because I can't have spice and I can't have garlic and I can't have onions and I can't have bell peppers. You know, I can't eat these things. I just can't digest them. And so they had a lot of like yummy pita bread that was made like mm-hmm. right there in front of us. They had like the stone oven. They had um, hummus, which I absolutely mm-hmm. love. They mm-hmm. had tahini sauce. Now their tahini sauce was not as good to me as the Greek tahini sauce. I like the Greek one better, but it was still good. They had a lot of um, good meat. 
I liked the lamb. I liked um, the, the uh, there was like beef, and chicken, like all of it. Most of it was grilled, which was nice. I did like that. They do overcook their meat. Uh, more than I would like, but it was still really good with everything, you know. Um, I really was surprised. I liked most of the food. It was very Mediterranean, kind of, I guess, with a little bit of an African flair to it. Mm, so, oh, lovely. Yeah, it was um, not difficult for me to eat or digest. So I was happy about that because when I was in India, I couldn't eat most anything mm. or at all. And so I had. Mm brought with me isogenic shakes and I was drinking those like twice a day and then just eating like once a day there. Oh. But in um, Egypt, I was eating all my meals. Mm -hmm. That is <laughs> and almost great. Everywhere we went, they, they had an omelet bar and they made me omelets every morning. So oh, I was like, oh, I can't, I, I felt very pampered. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yeah, that sounds like you did it right there, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go and, and do five star everything. Yeah. No, oh no eating around the bush there. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a highlight. Tell us a highlight of your trip. Like what, what, or a couple of highlights just to kind of, what I were the, the highlights for breath? me? I mean, I really enjoyed the Nubian village and mm -hmm. I did actually enjoy the, the camel ride and the Faluka. I really liked being on the Nile River on this boat. We had a beautiful homemade lunch. And, and then we all like kind of napped on this boat and the sun was shining in on us. And that was just mm. like so peaceful. And the kids mm. came. I know that's not like, you know, but it's like the culture. I really like that. Yeah, the culture, um, of course. I, I really loved seeing all the temples. There was a lot of temples we went to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after a while, they start to all feel the same. But mm -hmm. I really liked the feel of like the different energies mm -hmm. and the way I liked being there. Like mm -hmm. we saw some, most of them during the day, but we saw this one temple at night and we watched the sunset and they really did plan these things in a way that when the sun setting, like the, sh the sun shines just right over everything. And it was really beautiful. And I love that. I love the little villages that we drove through and stuff and just seeing the kids you know, at some of the temples yeah. we ran into them, they were so excited to see Americans. And we felt like movie stars because they were all like blowing us kisses. And that was fun. Oh. Yeah. And I lost I 10 that. pounds. I like that. That's a highlight. <laughs> that's, a, all the walking. that's a bonus. Oh my uh, gosh. It was a tour that, uh, it was a tour company that we, I hired to put our, our group tour together. And then Jules and I took every, we brought everybody. It was like our input. But yeah, it's a tour company. They do big tours and they might do even just guides. Um, I think it's called Egypt Unlimited. They're amazing. Mm. And Muhammad is the owner and he was spectacular. And our guide was um, Harris. And Harris was so amazing. And they all speak really well. Their English is like really well, like you can understand it. Um, and Harris was so intelligent and shared so much information Mm -hmm. He went above and beyond. I mean, we were mm -hmm. so pleased. I mm -hmm. feel like the universe provided us with the best company in the world. And, you know, I heard about them through Yusan because she went no. to Egypt with Did another she? group. And they were okay. the group, the company that okay. put it together for that group. And so okay. he told me about them. And so I do say word of mouth is always important. Yeah, sure. word of mouth is super important. And And I would like to put another trip together if anybody's interested please let me know and um, send me a message. I'm on email or on social media or wherever. And just let me know if you're interested in going to Egypt with me. Cause I am thinking of doing another trip. Um, I know that, you know, we had seven people that dropped out of this trip and you know, everything happens for a reason. I know they had their reasons, but let me just say mm -hmm. like, it was an amazing trip and they may want to try to go. <laughs> you know, like it was, People were concerned because of what's happening, you know, politically and, and with the war over there in um, Israel. But honestly, it didn't affect us at all. There was nothing in Egypt that was anything connected to that. We were so far removed from it that it wasn't a fear or there was nothing, you know. Even the airports, I felt very safe and protected. Mm -hmm. So, I, I And it was like they were full swinging gear of like, 
tourists coming. I mean, it's tourist season and nothing yes. slows them down. So I say, if you want to go, go. Um, yeah, I would do another location. Somebody asked. They told us about this great place in the desert where you can camp with the crystals. And at mm. night, it's really beautiful. It's like quartz crystals, but they're real pretty, like the white mm -hmm. ones, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then they do camping there and meditations, and it's a beautiful site. I totally want to do that. That's um, cool. Yeah, and it's like straight up camping. They bring like the tents and everything, and I guess you have like a cot. But uh, it sounds like amazing, and I'd like to do that. Um, there's other parts of Egypt that we did not get a chance to see that I would like to see. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, um, and maybe those people that sorry. couldn't go this time, maybe things will be better and they can go join you again. Yes. Yes. Um, I know I when I was... A question, Amanda asked, feeling of energy... Yes, I think it could be a past life, but also energy crystals help amplify our own gifts. And if you're feeling energy off of them, maybe look up the particular crystal that you're feeling the energy off of, because that might be tied to one of your chakras that's very active. Maybe you're a natural born healer and it's trying to push you in that direction and you're supposed to heal with crystals. Maybe you were a healer in another lifetime and used crystals. I've always felt drawn to them as well and felt energy around them since I was a small child. So I can relate to that. What about you, Cheryl? What do you think? Uh, I definitely think crystals can enhance your meditation. They can enhance whatever it is you're putting in them or intending, you know, whatever you're infusing your energy with. I went to a crystal mine when I was in Brazil and literally everything it's it's just the, the most beautiful things uh in the world and i did feel the energy and it's extremely pure high uh, refined in a way uh but once again it's the intention you put into your crystals yes because i do think they can um help you in many ways they're healing oh. you can have healing crystals if you want I love crystals. I mean, this minute, we're setting up our crystal store and we got our inventory last week and we're putting everything out. And I have to tell you the energy when you walk into the store now is just like spectacular. Uh, it, my husband and I, we just love being in the store now. It feels, I mean, it felt good before, but now it just feels amazing. You can feel the energy lifted up and it's just amplified in there now. And I love that. Mm -hmm. So definitely believe in crystals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Check out my crystal store guys online. I'm starting to post some of the inventory. Okay, um, great. Yeah, it's at Maxi at Moxie Crystals also on social media. Um, she is a healer. I signed up for Lori's course this weekend and to try to learn more about it. There is a lot of energy coming from Amethyst Golden Healer and this Plum Blossom Jasper I have. That's amazing. So I'm glad you're on the right journey. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. And I hope you enjoy Lori's chorus. Which Lori? Is that Lori um, that was on the show? Yeah, Amanda. Um, yeah, which, which Lori, Amanda? I'm we know a couple. We know a, we know a few Lori's. Yeah, there's Lori St. Clair. There's Lori that we had on the show, which there's, I can't think of her last name. Lori from yes, the show. Okay. That's fantastic. She's the perfect teacher for you. I just know it. You're going to love her class. Mm -hmm. She's so fun. That's what I love about her. She is so fun. She, she'll she make you smile and laugh while you learn. That's great. Uh, so look. So do, you uh, teach, do you teach what's that? healing? Do you teach healing? I don't. Um, well, I have my energy transformation sessions that I hold every month. And mm -hmm. I am teaching people. Uh, we meet on the first Thursday of every month. I mean, the first, uh, yeah, the first Thursday of every month. And then also I include some meditations and some remote energy healing. But what I'm teaching in my energy transformation sessions is how to uh, people to work with their own energy field or even to realize they have an, their own energy field and what they I can like do that. with it and feel it and experience it. Right. And oh, make it healthy crazy. and vibrant. So that's like where, that so, yeah. And then we do do energy healing. I do energy healing on the group. Uh, 
Yeah, when you sign up for my annual membership. But yeah, check it out. It's on my website and it's called ETS or Energy Transformation Session. Got it right there too, right underneath. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the link. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And then Amanda feels the energy and the healing in the Sunday Healing Prayer Circle you have. Yes, I'm so glad you mentioned the Healing Prayer Circle because it's kind of... I don't know if it's taken off, Kelly. It's like it's gotten deeper. It. Or That's it's like so amazing. It was such a beautiful idea and concept. I mean, so many people mm -hmm. appreciate it and love it. And your Facebook group that you have is like amazing. Yeah. I mean, I've gone on there to share stories. And speaking of that, the the young lady who I've been posting about who has yes. end stage liver cancer, she gained weight. And she's on the transplant list as of oh last week. Gosh. And she's super excited and she's hopeful and looking forward and actually felt good enough to spend time with her son because she had energy and they went to the beach together and she went to a mm -hmm. baseball game with her friend and her sister who were taking care of her. So yes. I'm so thank grateful. Um, I attribute that to her spirit and to all the prayers. Yeah. And thank you. We want to thank everyone. And really the healing prayer circle, if, if you haven't joined it yet, for anyone who hasn't joined it, it's free to join, number one. The, the link is here. Thanks, Brianna, for posting that. And it's also on my website at mediumcheryl.com. And we meet every Sunday uh, for half an hour or so on Zoom. Uh, and then if you sign up anyway, if you can't make Sunday night, still join because I'll send you the recording and it comes with the meditation. I mean, these meditations Beautiful. are channeled. I, I really do feel so connected to this group and it's such a high vibe community. And uh, look, we're all about manifesting and healing and co-creating with the universe. And I really do feel like there's topics or angels that come in each week to help. So yeah, I love the people love who, yeah, who bring their... A game, so to speak. So thank you. Um, so did you want to share about any of your upcoming events besides this one? Uh, yes, I did want to mention that I do have a circle of love event coming up for everyone. And this one is a, it's kind of a very intimate gathering. It's only for six people uh, and it's called circle of love. I hold one each month or I'll say every month I have at least one. I have two sometimes. This one is March 28th, and I'd love to see you there. Everyone gets a reading. We do mediumship, psychic uh, questions. Uh, it, it's really a feel-good uh, energy. It, you, you, know, you learn about what you're experiencing with your departed loved ones. So join us. If you haven't yet joined it or join us again, I have uh, some people that join me often or that come back because they enjoy it so much. So that's if you join me once, you're certainly welcome to come back again. That's awesome. And anything else coming up? Uh, well, April 11th, if I can just go ahead and say in April uh, for everyone, April 11th, I'm doing an event with Suzanne Northrup. And I'd love for you guys to join if you haven't met Suzanne. Uh, we're doing an online mediumship uh, demonstration where we will be doing audience readings uh, to a large group. So these are large group audience events, but come and join us because even if, um, you know, not everyone will get a reading, but we'll do as many as we can. But look, even if you don't get a personal reading, for example, doesn't mean that you won't feel the spirit world. It doesn't mean that you won't feel your loved ones, or it doesn't mean that they're not there. It, 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 if anything, they could be included in someone else's reading, right? We always say, if you can take any of that information for yourself, if so, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, I love that. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. I have a small group reading online that's coming up. Oh, cool. um, I have four tickets left. Yay. Everyone gets a reading. It's on uh, March 21st. And um, again, everybody gets a reading. It's eight people online on Zoom. So if you're interested, the tickets are for sale right now. There's the link online group readings dot eventbrite dot com and um i am opening up the crystal store probably the first weekend in april if you're in sacramento i have a lot of in-person events happening each month i have colby rebel coming to my new crystal store next month i'm super excited she's going to be teaching a little um mini workshop during the day and doing a demo at night so if you're in a, um, a medium near or around Sacramento area, check that out. You can find that on my website or probably on her website as well. And I send it out in my newsletter. 
Um, what's this? Yeah, and you can check out my events on Eventbrite as well. I'll be posting them every month. And you can also go to my website. And this is my website, yeah, and see what's upcoming. So check that out. And sign up for my newsletter um, also so you can get, you know, up and coming information about my events online and in person for sure. So thank you. That's what I have to share. <laughs> Can you hear me, Cheryl? I can. I can. I'm oh, just I'm letting happy. people. I'm letting people listen in and absorb this information. Yes. Uh, so look, there's so much happening with spring. We have spring coming this week. We had a new moon on Sunday. Uh, there's so much great energy happening this week. You're back, Kelly. Uh, so we know everything is kind of uh, getting in alignment here again. If things were kind of um, feeling funky there for a while for anyone for this last week. It does feel like we're kind of rounding a corner and you should feel, uh, I'm hoping this week with the transition, because we had daylight savings time, you know, like you said, it, it kind of does change, shift the energy, but we'll be stepping into spring soon uh, next week. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're excited to have you uh, be part of our radio show. Uh, we're excited to share our events with you. Uh, go ahead, Kelly. What were you going to say? I love spring. I love yeah. spring. Mm -hmm. and somebody was asking on Instagram on my page if everyone in your um, small group reading gets a reading, and I was explaining that they do. I told them. Oh, good, good. Just so you want to let them know. It was, Thank um, you. It was, uh, I lost them. It was somebody. It was um, Lammy Boo. <laughs> Hi, Lammy Boo. Yes. Absolutely. And it's it's lovely. Uh, you know, it's a very intimate evening. And um, I, I just want to tell you that uh, I think people learn about the spirit world, too. They're they're there to participate and receive a reading, but they also learn about spirit. They learn what the messages are and what's important that spirit's trying to connect with them and bring through for them and the love they have for them. I love it. And that's beautiful. I, um, somebody asked earlier where I'm going next, what trip, and I do want to do another group trip next year. Um, and I'm torn between going back to Egypt because there's so much to see or going back to, um, India because I went mm -hmm. in 2017 mm -hmm. and I saw like more of Northern India and I've always wanted mm -hmm. to go into the South. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to see the Himalayan mountains. So I don't mm -hmm. know what to do. There's so many places I want to go. I'm just trying to figure it out. But if so anybody is interested in traveling, send me an email and let me know. Um, I am putting a trip together for next year, maybe at the end. I don't know when. Like yeah. November of next year, maybe. Good, 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 good. That's exciting. What's this? Oh, this is sweet. Aw. I have chills Thank going through you. my legs like crazy when you are all talking about with what you guys are doing. You ladies have such wonderful energy. Amanda, so do you. And we thank you so much just for being on our show and really being a contributor uh, with your input and your great questions. You have some really good questions. And we're so glad that you're heal You're studying healing and yes. all the intuitive work you're learning. That's uh, uh, absolutely amazing. So we're not doing readings. I don't know if anybody figured that out. Um, uh, let's see. But we definitely w do do readings soon. And Cheryl and I, um, we're going to get together here soon, maybe this week, and discuss some future plans for our podcast radio show here. Um, we talked about before I left. And so be on the lookout for some upcoming like good changes to the show. Uh, more guests, more readings, you know, a little bit knowing what to expect in each show a little bit more in advance. We're trying to work on that. So uh, if there's anybody you think that we should interview or you're very curious, anything, any subject that you're super curious about that you would like to hear us talk about, even if we've talked about it on a past show, you know, email us at the um, questions at seeingbeyondradio.com. And let us know, like, maybe there's a, a an amazing 
you know, healer or a psychic medium or whatever it is that you are curious about or want to hear us interview. And we can always try to make that happen. Right, Cheryl? Absolutely. And uh, we love talking about even talking about the same topic in different ways, because, look, people can ask as many questions. There's no wrong questions. There's no bad questions. These questions, you know, are sincere. They come from the heart. We know that. And we're out here to help everyone really find their own way. Or if they, they are feeling lost, maybe help them on their path somewhat and really encourage people to explore their own intuition and really even, even teach them if they just want to know about it. You know, I know yeah. both Kelly and I are mentors. So if you want to study with us, that's great. Uh, but also maybe you're just interested and you love coming to the show or coming to our events. That's perfect. We love having you just to experience the spirit world. Yes, uh, I um, I love having the show. I know that Jules is asking me on the plane, like, well, what is like, what did you guys get from the show? And to me, I feel like I get to talk about amazing subjects with other like-minded people and we get to help other people who have questions that never you know get to they want to get them answered by just regular people i mean like we're mediums but we're also just regular people like them and it's like a safe place for everybody to kind of come together and gather and get information and help each other that's what i feel like and i like that um we're reaching the people that need to be reached however I, we reach them you know yeah yeah. Well, we've cre created a beautiful following of listeners and it's growing all the time. And we, I, we hear from you, we get emails all the time. And every time we do readings, when I talk to you guys, it's like, Oh, I watch your show. I see you guys on the show. I'm I'll see you tomorrow night on your show. It's yeah. like, I love hearing from you. Oh, I love that. So, um, Brianna, if you could send, uh, if you're able to post on my Instagram, the, email for everybody to send um questions to could you put that on my instagram i don't know if it's gonna let me i can't copy and paste it <laughs> so i don't know if you can if you're still online or if you hopefully you didn't get kicked off by the snow or the weather in colorado <laughs> but uh no, i think she already did i see a comment from her saying she already did so oh yay okay i just don't see it on my instagram I'm looking. I don't think it went on Instagram. You have to do it manually on Instagram. It doesn't let you do it in StreamYard, unfortunately. So anything you post on StreamYard, you have to manually post on Instagram. It's annoying. <laughs> Instagram is difficult. Uh, I did, but I sent it again. Okay, I'll look. I see it now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. It just popped up. Thank you, Brianna. I just want to make sure everybody has that, you know, even um, here on, you know, so they can send that to us, right? If they have questions, because we are going to meet here this week or next week, early next week and come up with a plan. So I'm excited about that. Are you? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to building a bigger platform and reaching more yeah. people. Yeah. I would like that too. I would like to have more interviews, more mm -hmm. questions answered, more subjects talked about. There's some things that we haven't really talked about or touched on, and I want to jump mm -hmm. into those, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's and get do that. Some of our previous guests back on that we didn't get to ask enough questions to because they were only on for an hour, so we have to have them back. You know? We definitely have to do a part two with yeah, these people. Yeah, like AJ or even Thomas. Yeah, like, yeah, awesome. they're, they're full of information, so. Definitely check that out. Well, uh, guys, I know we're wrapping up. We're at the end of our hour, and um, I just can't tell you enough uh, when we'll be, uh, how much we appreciate all of you being here, but also we'll be back next Wednesday. I know we'll be doing readings next week uh, because we didn't get to them tonight, but please join us next week, and we will uh, connect with you then. We'll be back here uh, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, once again, happy spring, everyone. Happy new moon. Uh, it's an exciting, exciting energy right now as we're moving into the more sunshine in these longer days. 
Yes, I'm excited for that. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to be back. Hope to see you guys all next week. And we're going to, did I hear you say, and I think we've said this, we're doing readings next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Are you ready? Let's do it. We are ready next week readings. So share with everybody and let them know. The okay. more the merrier. All right. Guys, have a great evening. We love you. Namaste.